Hey, what's up everybody? It's CrossCurrent. Today I'm giving you a beginner's guide to Deadly Days. Now to start off, Deadly Days is a post-apocalyptic roguelike. So, it is a very fun game. I got it for free, but I believe it's typically around $15 to $20 on Steam. The game's been out for a little while too, so it has some decent updates from the videos I saw from people in the past. Now, to start off, you're looking at the main page here. The credits just show the credits of people. Quit. Encyclopedia just kind of shows everything you've got throughout your runs, from base items to weapons, special powers, survivors, zombies, and achievements. The daily challenge changes every day and is a fun way to kind of keep things spicy with this game without having to do the same old run every time. Being a roguelike though, it does keep you on your toes and keep things a little interesting. So to start off, let's do a new game. You can choose easy, medium, or hard, but only once you get to a certain level. You get this experience at the end of the game, depending on how long you survive and what you do within the game. We'll play easy for now. Now, in this specialization, I've found that you can actually not change any of the starting things you have. It just shows the options for what you can find within the game. So if I were to view the unlocks here, it shows everything that I could earn in the game, but does not let me start off with it. Same goes for the other stuff. You win a game, you get to unlock that stuff. I've been extremely close, but died instantly right when I was about to finish a run that lasted almost 20 days. All right, so here you are. Your regular base will give you a basic tutorial, but there's a lot of things they do not bring up, nor the good way to play the game. This is mainly a point and click type game though. Over here you have your ability. Typically it's either the map wide heal or it's one that buffs up your characters. Down here you have a passive ability which happens on its own. The coffee increases the length of the day and if you upgrade it further using scrap up here, which you can also use for that ability, it'll get better. You can use your food supply to level up your characters, but I wouldn't suggest doing that. I suggest, especially early on in the game, let them just level up by killing zombies and then level them up later on with food if you have an abundance of it. The scrap gets earned pretty easily. You'll see once I start the game. So here we've got three scavenge miss missions. The main thing to look at is the size. The size of the map is very obnoxious if you go to a very large map because then you might not be able to find what you're looking for. There are some other places you could find such as a warehouse which will give you a lot of scraps, a hardware store which will give you a bunch of tools, tools, you'll see down there once you finish the first level, can give you upgrades and passive things by making rooms. You also have places like a supermarket where you can get more food, a hospital which can give you a little bit of everything, as well as the burger place, which gives you a lot of different... The burger place gives you a lot of different things, and from what I recall, will pop up in the top left to give you four map pieces, and that's what you have to do to actually beat the game. I would suggest not rushing that, especially if you just started, because when you go to those burger joint spots, they have special bosses there as well. Now we're going to start. Also, if you're going to choose a place, be sure you read below what it might say. Sometimes it'll say a spotted infestation of rats, or a giant zombie, or sometimes a treasure. That should be the main thing to determine before you go somewhere, as well as a danger level. Danger level 1 still means you can die, which I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go there. All the sides were the same. All the danger was the same. The loot was higher there, though. All right, so you see right there, you've got a bunch of little warehouses. Those warehouses do not really offer a whole lot. And we're just going to kind of rush through these zombies. You see on the map there, that black area, that is where you cannot go any further. That is the boundary of the map. The lighter gray, or dark gray if you want to call it, is where you can actually move. Now you're going to use WASD to move around 
from the sky, but for your characters, you're just going to click with the mouse or hold down control and move around with your mouse so you can hit the enemies by standing still. For the day, you want to kind of just rush through stuff. Cars are a quick way to get quick loot, but looting buildings is huge. Especially on scavenge, that's about all you're going to be able to do. Try to get the buildings out early on because your characters will be in there for a while. Now if you look on the left side here, you've got the precise airstrike. That happens once every roughly 10 seconds. I suggest just keep using it. No point not using it, as well as a healing unit. The map-wide heal can only be used once though. So use it wisely and use it in a dire scenario. Apple trees are great, that'll give you food, doesn't matter if it's a supermarket area or some other area, it is really helpful. Now when stuff gets looted, the character will pick it up on its own, so just kind of wait a second and let it pick it up, otherwise you might just leave it on the ground and that'd be really awkward and sad. Okay, so we've got 30 seconds until it becomes night, so I'm going to loot these last little things right here and make sure that I start the engine to my bus. After that, we just have to send the units over to the bus area, and they can leave. So I just need to click right there, and I wait for them to get there. But since it's closer to night, there's a lot of enemies popping up. Right now is not a bad time to use a map-wide heal, just to be safe. I could loot that building, but I really don't want to take that chance. But since I'm so close to the car, and there's a lot of these warehouses, I could probably get away with looting these before I leave. To get some extra scrap because if something really goes wrong i can just send my survivors inside that zone and finish all right so that was the first level now we got one tool which shows us down here at the bottom left where what we can do with it now i have found out of all the three guns the equalizer is the best weapon since it's kind of a little bit of both the impulse is very fast smg type gun and the executioner is basically like an ar that would shoot like a sniper rifle Lots of damage, but lots of reloading. When you're reloading, you're very easy, easily attacked, which I suggest against getting weapons like that, unless you have some sort of buff to increase the reload speed. Now, when you craft one of these weapons, it makes all the other ones cost a lot more, and it gives you a bonus that you get to choose, such as when you shoot an enemy, they explode for extra damage to the other enemies nearby, you get quicker reload time, more damage, first hit does more, etc. Now we look at the rooms here, got some empty rooms, you have to start with one at a time, so the first one, these three are here, it switches on the next room and the next room, but the same three options will still be there, at least for the easy mode of the game. So whenever you complete all objectives on a given day, every survivor levels up, I don't really like that one, it's good if you get it early, but I find that it doesn't happen early enough. Storage room, generating 10 scrap after every day. That can be nice, but I'm not really sure. I haven't really seen it come into effect very well. And this repairs the highest rarity weapon each day and also adds a bonus mod if the weapon is not legendary. Mods, they increase the guns. And doing this each day allows you to at least get more scraps by selling weapons, even if you don't need them. You can sell them for a lot more if they're not broken. Now to show you how to do that, you come over here. And you see this weapon right here? First, I'm going to repair it by clicking on it. Now, the chances of it se breaking seems very slim. So, I'm going to give this revolver to the character that has a knife. Because the knife is kind of awkward and you have to kind of be hit to actually use it. Now, you see that I have 47 scrap? I'm going to try to sell this. Since it is made, it sells for 9 scraps. If it's broken, which everything you find, to my knowledge, starts broken... It'll sell for only 4. To repair it costs 10. So you're going to want to sell it. If you're planning on selling it, don't repair it first. There's no point in doing that. Now, what I think I'd do is I'll come down here. I can add another item slot, but I don't have another item. I could add a special power slot, but I don't have an extra power slot. So I'm going to instead upgrade the coffee to increase the length of the day so I can loot longer out in the open. Now we come over here, we've got the warehouse. A giant zombie was sighted. It might say danger one, giant zombies aren't a joke. Don't do it, 
not worth it, not worth losing your characters. I would say probably do the scavenge on this one, but we're going to try the hospital so you can see what to do. So the main thing you want to do now that you're here is you're going to try to follow the road and find where the hospital is. The hospital is going to take a lot longer to loot than any other building you've seen so far. Now, you see that little path right there where there is grass? That actually will not work. You will not be able to go through, and it'll just waste a bunch of time and make you aggravated, especially if you're trying to run away. Don't do it. Trust me. It's not worth it. Now, typically, I go from corner to corner, and eventually we'll find the hospital. Here, I got very unlucky, so I'm going to see if I can cut through here and check this left area. Since it seems like the only area that might be big enough, so it finds oh vending machine. I'll have him start looting that. Vending machines give you unusual abilities or items if you have either a lot of scrap, a lot of food, or if you want and you have none of that, you can pay scaling of your enemies to get something. Typically that's used for when you don't have a lot of food. You can then scale the zombie threat level so then you can get food and survive. Looks like actually it was this top right area. It's going to be very tough to actually loot this place well, but we'll do it for the video. Careful of those barrels, those will blow up. If you manage to find that there's fire on the map, use your airstrike where you see a fire hydrant, so then the water will spray onto the fire, and then your characters can go through there without a problem. All right, so we're going to click there to loot it. You can airstrike on your characters. I'd suggest against it, but in a pinch, it will kill almost all the zombies, especially if they're normal zombies. Now, speaking of normal zombies, on around day five, you will have a special zombie pop up. It'll pop up very often. Sometimes it'll be characters that grab you with their tongue. That character is one of the most painful ones, in my opinion, to go against. These will drag you across possibly the whole map and then your character will most likely die. There are ones that run really fast and will chase you, and to run away is kind of not a good idea. And there's one that kind of holds a bunch of zombie rats. Not as bad as the others, but still very obnoxious. Now, the music in this game is also really nice, but I'll talk about that more in my review of this game. But, as you'll see right here, it's nighttime. He's just about finished looting, and we got a special item. Explosive Outburst. We'll check that once we get back. So now we gotta start the engine and head on back to the car as quick as possible. Fortunately though, the zombies are hoarding. If one of your characters dies, don't worry, you still have another one. And if you do a rescue mission, you can get them back. You, know, you can't get the same character, but you can find a new character and typically they have actually good weapons. Unless you get very unlikely. All right, so the second day is done. The little aesthetic will be that there's more zombies around here, and as the days progress, there'll be other little things you can do, such as hanging out watching TV, which rests your characters. You can have a day where you repair all your weapons. So it's not always good to sell your weapons. Save them in case you get that so you can use that later. We got a new power. All zombies near your survivors get caught in an explosion. Now, I'm not sure about this one. This sounds like it'd be a danger also to your characters because explosions will hurt your humans. Not so shocking. But, in a pinch, it can probably save them. Now, tools take a long time to get, so if you find a hardware store, I would suggest, above all else, go for that. Unless you have no food. If you hover over it, we'll talk about how much food you have left. But yeah, I think that does it for this guide video. If there's any questions you have about this game or anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Please hit the subscription if you like my content. Smash that bell to stay notified. Like the video if you like the video. Share with your friends if you think you could use it. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>